Yeah, well, I am super excited to be with you this evening here at Beyond Church Online. And we are live together, which is great. So say, I'm just saying hello to everyone who has uh, commented on Facebook. Hello to you all. There's been heaps of shout outs. I'm pleased, excited, um, so pumped you're with us. And also for those of you who are watching us on YouTube. And for those who might jump on later, it might not be Monday night for you, but whenever it is, I just want to say that you are at the right place at the right time. Because I know wholeheartedly that this message is going to speak to you right where you are, wherever you might find yourself, whichever uh, emotional state you're in, physical state you're in, whatever you believe in God for, I know that this is going to be something that's going to speak directly into your circumstances this evening. So I hope you're ready. I uh, hope you've uh, got an open heart and an open mind to receive all that God has for you as we gather around this message tonight and as we launch uh, our Welcome Home series online at Beyond, Church, at Beyond Church Online. Now we launched this on Sunday morning in our Sunday morning service, uh, and we'll, again, we'll be launching on Tuesday night in our Tuesday night community. Uh, but it is a really poignant message to be talking to you about and with you about because uh, this is all about moving out of, you know, we're really praying and believing, moving out of some of the restrictions and some of the things that have kept us away from each other, and we can begin to welcome home uh, us as a community. Uh, so online, I want you to know that we uh, want you to feel like you are right at home, that despite the fact that you might not be able to be in the room, or this might be the place that you connect with us as Beyond Church, I want to extend the warmest welcome to you. I want you to feel just like you are one of the family, wherever you're watching from right now. I want you to feel right at home. And if you're a guest with us this evening, if it's the first time you've ever connected with Beyond Church, I want to make sure that you feel as comfortable as ever. And we are right here with you. We are here for you. And if you haven't yet connected with us, make sure you do that. That's your best next step to help us connect with you and help us to move with you in your journey, uh, wherever you might be moving forward. Hopefully it's with us and uh, hopefully it's, uh, a, you're connecting with us in a, a meaningful and a deep way. I want to jump straight into this message with you from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5 to 6. This is really going to anchor this message this evening. So if you're looking at a um, uh, Bible app on your phone or you've uh, got a hard copy Bible, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 to 6. And the context of this passage is quite profound. Uh, the Apostle Paul was really the pioneer of the, the early church 2,000 years ago. Um, but like all church leaders and even any leader, really, uh, he was struggling with a number of things. And he was right in the thick of his ministry journey. Things were really taking off for the church at the time. And what we see in this text, which I'll read for you, uh, for you in a minute, is that Paul at this time was really struggling with this church in uh, Corinth. He was really struggling to get unity amongst the church. It was almost at a point of splitting. There were some people following one type of leadership and some people following another. Uh, we were also seeing that internally Paul was struggling with conflict about who he was and his identity. Uh, and he was struggling with insecurity. Uh, and I just want to um, share this verse with you. And I think it's going to speak to you this evening. It says this, this is Paul speaking to the church in Corinth. He says, when we arrived in Macedonia, there was no rest for us. We faced conflict from every direction. I wonder if you've ever faced conflict from every direction. I was talking to one of our teams tonight. I said, hey, have you ever faced conflict from every direction? Maybe in your marriage. Maybe you're finding the struggle in your finances. Maybe you're facing conflict in the workplace. Maybe it just seems like wherever you turn, there's conflict. Maybe you're suffering from road rage. Wherever you go, there seems to be conflict. Paul's saying that he was suffering conflict in every direction with battles on the outside and fear on the inside. So he's saying, hey, not only am I struggling with what's going on around me, I've got some issues going on inside me that I also cannot deal with. And this is what he says, but God. What I want you to do right now, I want you to write in the comment thread on Facebook or YouTube, ex big caps locks, but God. It's going to be important for you to remember later. But God. But God who encourages those who are discouraged. Yeah, I just want you to know that God does encourage people. God wants to encourage you tonight. And that's what this message is all about. You finding encouragement, maybe in the middle of your discouragement. But the God who encourages, encourages encouraged us by the arrival of Titus, by the arrival of Titus. But God, Paul says, God turned it all around for him. He turned it all around. He brought encouragement where there was discouragement. And for you tonight, it's my prayer. I want you to remember that God encourages his people, but he uses his people to bring the encouragement. That's what that verse says. God encouraged us by the arrival of Titus. God encourages his people, but he uses his people to bring the encouragement. And in fact, that word arrival, 
that we read here in this text. Titus brought encouragement by his arrival. You know, that word that Paul uses, arrival, in the Greek original text is the word parousia. And it's used almost exclusively to describe the second coming of Jesus in the New Testament. And so what Paul's saying, he's likening the arrival of his friend Titus to the arrival of Jesus himself. What he's trying to say to his friends and what I'm trying to say to you tonight is that when we arrive in community, when we arrive together, when we come together like this, when we welcome each other home, whether it's online or in the physical, uh, physical location of Beyond Church, we are welcoming each other home with the arrival of God himself, where God brings something that, well, you bring something that only God can bring. There's something divine about the gathered people. There's something miraculous. There's something of heaven when we get together, when we arrive together. So I want you to know that if you're online tonight, if you're in a Facebook thread or YouTube thread, that you can bring something of God into that conversation. You know, when I invite you and encourage you to share something in that feed, it's not just a few words, but it's really God speaking through you to bring encouragement and inspiration to those people who are watching. We want this to be a community of people. We want this space to be just as much home as it is in the physical location. And this is how I know that we're going to be encouraged tonight because there is power in coming home. There is power in coming home. When God sends someone into your life, when God sends someone to you like Paul received Titus, the arrival of his friend, there is something powerful about coming together as the people of God, as Jesus' church, the gathered people. You know, we are better together. We are better together. There is power in community. In fact, we are created for community. And I want to share with you really briefly just a few things that really spoke to me when I started studying what it was to um, come together again, to welcome each other home in this season. The first thing I discovered about the power of being at home is that at home, you are known. At home, you are known. You see, I am Luke. In case you don't know who I am, hello. I'm Luke. I'm actually a husband. And my wife is watching online tonight. Hi, Rach. Good to see you. Just give my beautiful wife some love. Actually, while you're doing that, why don't you just give some love to our brand new location leaders, Josh and Emma Crofts, who are doing a sensational job here, launching this brand new church, just as much church as any other physical location is. So just say, hey, Josh. Hey, Emma. Great work. You're doing awesome. And also, while you're there, just tell my wonderful wife that she's awesome as well because she is. So I'm a husband. I'm a, I'm a pastor of a church. I'm a son. My mum's also watching. Hey, mum. <laughs> I'm a grandson. I think my grandmother's also watching. <laughs> I'm a father to some beautiful children, a couple of them here in the room tonight and some watching from home. One of them was singing earlier. You've got a beautiful voice, Violet. I'm also a friend and I have some friends watching some friends. I've shared my feed with like a thousand friends, so hopefully you, you all jumped on and you're all watching with me tonight. You see, I'm known, I'm known as those titles because I'm known by those people. I'm known by those titles because I'm known by those people. I'm a, a, without a mother, I'm not a son. And without a church, I'm not a pastor. And without a wife, I'm not a husband. And without children, I'm not a father. And without my friends, I can't be a friend. You see, we actually discover our purpose we actually know who we are. We actually find our identity when we are known by others. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 says this. It says, Then God said, Let us make human beings. This is God speaking. Let us. This is God speaking. Let us make human beings in our. This is God speaking in our image. To be like us, plural. It's God speaking. We're created in the image of God. And God is actually intrinsically a community himself. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One of my favorite theologians, and you can look him up online, Stanley Grenz, he talks about this concept, this theological concept, this God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit as the social or the relational God. God who is community, not just the God that creates community, not just the God who designs community, but the God who is intrinsically community. God all by himself is never alone. And that's God's heart for you. That even when you are found all by yourself, in fact, you are never alone because you are known. You find purpose in community. We are created for community and we cannot be fully human outside of it. This might be something new for you to get a hold of, but it's going to set you free. It's going to set you up to succeed. It's going to help you find your identity. It's going to help you move forward with strength and clarity about who you are and what God's got for you if you know that you find your humanity you find your purpose, you find your direction when you are known by others. 
and being with the gathered people, welcoming each other home, just like we are tonight, we actually can find our complete selves. And we can only reflect the image of God when we're found with the people of God. And my final verse on this thought is from Proverbs 18, verse 1, from the message paraphrase. It says this, Loners who care only for themselves spit on the common good. Wow, that's a savage verse, isn't it? Loners who care only for themselves spit on the common good. But I know that's not you because how do I know that you aren't a loner who cares only for themselves? Because you're here in the virtual room tonight. So welcome. You're making a great decision to build community, reflecting the image of God. You'll find purpose. You'll discover your identity in a room just like this. And I'm so pumped that you're with us tonight. So here's my question to you. Who knows you? Come on, who knows you? Who knows you? Who do you know? So come on, through this series, Welcome Home, let's invest ourselves into the gathering. Let's invest ourselves. Next Monday night, 7.30, we're here again. Make sure you are here. We want you to be known in this place and we want to know you. So over the next few weeks, let's invest into building community together in a room just like this. How cool is it that you can be in your land room and be building community? The world is a very different place and I'm excited about it. So in community, welcome home. When you are at home, you are known. When you are at home, number two, you are needed. In Romans chapter 1, verse 11 to 12, the Bible says, For I long to visit you. This is Paul speaking to the church in Rome. I long to visit you so I can bring some spiritual gift that will help you grow strong in the Lord. When we get together, when we get together, when we get together, When we welcome each other home, when we're in community, when we get together, he says, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. You see, it's only when we are together that we can share ourselves. There's something on your life that we want to know about, that we want you to share with us. Sharing our gifts with each other is central to who we are. And guess what? You have something that I need and I've got something hopefully I can bring to you. And when we are at home, We are needed. I wonder what you're going to bring into the room tonight. I wonder what you're going to bring into the room tonight. What will you arrive with, like Titus? Will you arrive with something of heaven? Can I encourage you tonight, if you're watching uh, online on Facebook and YouTube, can I encourage you that you are here for a reason, that you are here on purpose, that is no mistake that you're in the room that you are in tonight. It's not by accident or by chance that you find yourself in the thread in these comments. But God wants you to be here because He wants you to bring something. You have got something to contribute. You have got something to invest into the world. And here you are needed. We want you to contribute. We want you to be known and we want you to invest into what God has for His church. When you are at home, you are needed. When you are at home, you are needed. You know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see over the last few weeks so many people connecting with Beyond Church physical locations. As we've come back together in the room um, last weekend in Cessnock and Scone and uh, last Tuesday night, we have seen new people joining teams and new people serving. And guess what? Tonight, online, here in this room and at home, right where you are, we're seeing new people serve on the online team. And if you would like to serve on the online team, if you would like that sense of uh, contributing to community, then you can do that. In fact, I'm going to get our team right now to drop a link in the comment thread on Facebook and YouTube. And that link is going to allow you to connect with us. That's right. And you can let us know if you would like to be a part of the Beyond Church team. You can say, hey, I want to be a part of the Cessna location team. Hey, I want to be a part of the Scone location team. Hey, I want to be a part of the online team. If you want to be a part of what God's doing uh, in this place, and use what he's put on your life to make a contribution, then you can do that. And we would love to help you move forward in that way because we know that you are needed when you are at home. Thanks, team. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Doing so well. So seeing new team members across the board is just fantastic because we know that serving on teams builds our life. And at Beyond Church, we're going to give every person every opportunity to serve every time we gather. So here's my question for you as I begin to wrap up. I wonder what you're going to bring to the room. I thank you so much for all of you tonight who have brought something. You've said hi, you've built community, you've made a contribution. I just want to say thank you for that. What will you bring? You are needed. What will you bring? So let's invest over the coming weeks into gathering together, arriving in the room, ready to serve. And like I said, if you'd like to join a team, it's so easy to do that right now. And finally, 
My final thought, when we are at home, we are known, we are needed, and finally we are called. You know, when God called me, first of all, I believe it was when I was six years old. I was six years old and I was in a room, in a life group, uh, not far from here actually, not far from this studio. And uh, in that life group, when I was six years old, the guy at the front, I shared this on Sunday, I said he was an elderly man, but looking back when you're six years old, everybody is elderly. Is that right? Like I think I'd probably look elderly to my six-year-old daughter. And so maybe he was a young man. <laughs> so he, was, uh, he invited uh, the group. He said, hey, is there anyone in this group who'd like to uh, give their heart to Jesus? And I just knew that I was hearing the voice of God calling me to respond to that invitation. When I was six years old, I said yes to Jesus for the first time. And then when I was 12 years old, I was at a youth camp. And at that youth camp, the guy at the front, I don't remember uh, his name or you know, what he was sharing, but I remember him inviting us uh, forward for prayer. And when I went forward for prayer, uh, he prayed over us and I remember him praying for me. And I remember at, in that moment, God really clearly speaking to me about my future and calling me into what was next for my life. And I remember also when I was 18 years old, I was on a phone call. I was on a phone call to my wife. Well, she wasn't my wife at that time, but she, it was looking like that was a uh, high likelihood in the future. And I remember her, she was asking me, she said, you know, what, what does your future look like? What, what do you want to do with your life? And in that moment, again, I just felt like God was speaking to me about making a commitment to my future, about what he'd called me to and about pastoring a church and pastoring churches. And I, in that conversation, was able to speak what God had been putting on my heart. And then when I was 25 years old in a, a Hillsong conference, I remember the speaker down the front, again, don't remember their name or what they were saying, but in the seat, you know, 20 rows back from the platform, I remember God very clearly saying to me, this is your future. You are called to serve me. You're called to serve the local church. And I remember very clearly God speaking to me in that moment, on that night, in that room where I was right at home. And then when I was 35 years old, right here in this church, here in this Cessnock location, not far from this very studio, I, uh, was not, I didn't have a great experience, actually, that particular service. I felt a little bit discouraged, like Paul did in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I felt a little bit conflicted. I felt like there was conflict on the outside and there was conflict on the inside. And I went home and I was praying to God, God, what is it that you've got for me? It just doesn't feel like I'm moving forward the way you said I would. And in that moment, I remember God speaking to me again and calling me into what he said that was for my life. And in each of those circumstances, in each of those stories, it was when I was right at home. I was in the community of faith. I was with other people. I was either on a phone call, in a life group, in a church service, at a conference. And when I was at that place, at that time, like you are tonight, in this virtual space, I was listening to God and He was speaking very clearly about my future. And tonight, when you are at home, like you are right now, I know that God is speaking clearly to you. And maybe you've never said yes to Jesus before. You've never responded to that initial call of God on your life. Well, tonight is your opportunity to see your life completely transformed by the power of God. And so what I want to do, I want to share this final verse with you. It's from John chapter 15, verse 16 to 17. It says this. It says, you didn't choose me. This is Jesus speaking. Remember, I chose you. You didn't choose me, Jesus said, but I chose you. I chose chose you. I'm not sure how you feel tonight. I'm not sure where you're at in your life. I'm not sure what you're struggling with. I'm not sure what your health situation is, what your financial position is. I'm not sure what's going on at work, in your marriage. I'm not sure how you're working through the issues you have with your children. But what I do know is that despite the conflict, despite the tension, Jesus tonight is calling your name right here in this place at home as we welcome everybody into this virtual room. Despite the hundreds of people that might be watching now, you know that Jesus is speaking directly to you. You can hear him right now. He's calling you into what's next for your life. If you've never responded to that invitation before, to give your life to Jesus, to give your heart to him, and tonight is your night. And I'm going to invite you to do that right now. And it is so simple. It's so easy, a free gift, an offer of salvation for you to freely receive. And all I invite you to do is pray this simple prayer after me. And as you do that, I know that you are going to hear the word of God for your life. It's going to set you up for a life like you never expected, bigger and fuller, full of more hope and, than you ever experienced before. So why don't you pray this prayer after me? 
I'm going to get everyone in the studio to pray this prayer with me. And if you're online at home, why don't you just take a moment and pray this together as a church? Come on. Jesus, this is my decision. Today, I say yes to you. You died on the cross to pay the price for my sin. I invite you to be my saviour. Come into my life. Forgive my sin and fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. If you prayed that prayer tonight for the first time, we would love to know. We would love to connect with you. Uh, You can write yes in the comment thread right now so we don't miss you. Uh, Or you can click the link that's being dropped in Facebook and YouTube right now and that'll help us to be able to follow you up and make sure that we're helping you the best way that we can. Uh, And if tonight you are a Jesus follower, but you feel stuck, you feel like you've stopped hearing his voice for your life, Well, can you also just let us know in the comment thread? What I'd love to do is I just want to pray over you. And to know that that's you, why don't you write in that comment thread, called, C-A-L-L-D. And while we're here, right at home, right where you're comfortable, in a safe place, right called, right there, right now. And as I finish up, I'm going to go back onto Facebook and see those people that have written called in the comment thread. And I'm going to pray over each single person that's written that in that comment thread. You kind of feel like, yeah, I, I, want, to, I want to know what it's like to be known. I want to know what it's like to be needed. I want to know what it's like to be called. I want God to really speak to me tonight. Well, tonight's your night, friend. I'm going to pray over that, um, that person, whoever that might be. It might be a few people, right? Called in the comment thread, Facebook and YouTube. And let me pray over you tonight as you move into your week. Thanks, church.